Hi, so I want to create a site notification block and the user story that I set up is an administrator wants an easy way to activate and display a message to all of the site users on a Moodle website. She wants the message to be av available as a block so she can choose on which pages to make that block available. And she needs a button to enable or disable uh, the display of the block. A drop down to select the color of it. So green might be a positive message. Red will be a warning. And we're going to use uh, bootstrap classes for that because that's built in the alerts. And an input box where she can type a message. So when she's got that, she can enable the blocks. And then by clicking a button or a checkbox to enable or disable the display, all across the site it will be displayed or hidden. So let's start. So in our Moodle folder, I create, um, I go to the blocks folder and in blocks, I add a new folder in this case called site notification. In there, I create the, the first file, which is the block site notification. So the naming convention is block underscore and the name of the plugin seems like you can do multiple words with underscores but block underscore is the main part of it then we've got a settings file and a version file a db folder and inside the db folder we've got some access and in the language folder we've got an english language file declaration so the resource on the moodle.org website is this page here we're going to look at a step-by-step -step guide to creating blocks that's on docs.moodle.org forward slash dev forward slash blocks so on here it says okay so get your basic php file going your block underscore and the name of your plugin dot php so i've got that here that is in the root folder of that plugin block side notification the PHP there we go so that's there we've got the file then you put this method this class declaration in there so there's the start of the class declaration and it ends at the bottom there next you can add the access to the or the, the capabilities that will be added for that block and that is in the DB folder access.php file so go to DB access.php there it is just change that to the name of your plugin so there it is just change that to the name of your plugin now next thing we're going to do the language file so in the language folder in the en for english folder i'm putting the same file name block underscore my plugin name dot php so language folder English you see those two file names are the same so don't get confused but they they need to be the same according to the Moodle Docs in here I've got my language declarations in there so it's a it's an array that gets built up that's the key that's the value so everywhere we want to use that specific string we will be calling get string give it the name of this plugin and then say give me the plugin name string and it will return that so you'll see that in action just now then version of php so the importance of the version file is that if you don't put this in moodle will actually not pick up your plugin so you can just simply copy that into the file so there's version.php and these dates you can set read up on it just go with the default dates if you want as you increase your plugin you'll increase the version from the end here so you'll do version one then version two and every time you change this and save it moodle will pick up that there was an update to the plugin now you don't have to do that every time you save the plugin so don't worry about that but sometimes when you do big changes it's necessary to do that then uh, in the documentation if you actually want to see something in your block you need to add this public method 
to your class declaration. So in my class declaration, public function get content. There, is, there it is. It's that one. It's got the content output and it returns the content. So there I return the content. Don't read this because I've changed that now for this plugin. And now you can actually run your plugin. So when you now have these files and you refresh Moodle, Moodle will tell you it needs to upgrade the database, it picked up the plugin, and it will install it for you. So I just want to go down on this page a little bit further uh, so until we get to this one. So if you want the plugin to be installed on in multiple places in the Moodle, just add this method to your base PHP file as well. So, you know, uh, there it is. Where is it? There it is. And we've got two more. We have, if your plugin has a settings.php file, then you can add this method. And then last thing here, just some eye candy. If you don't want an ugly big header at the top of your block, just add this method into the PHP file as well. So hide header, and I'll just give you more of the block to use for your content. So I've created that in my Moodle structure, and the settings file we'll get to just now. So it's going to be there already, but we'll get to that just now. You don't need that for this first step so I'm going to of course you can take out or comment that as config until you create the settings file let's let's refresh the Moodle and then see what what goes on so I'm just gonna go refresh there we go now my Moodle is picking up that there is a site notification block in the folder blocks site notification it wants to install it there's the version number so if you increment, you know, in your version.php file, if you increment that, the Moodle will pick up that it's different from the version that it currently has, and it'll show you this screen again. So to complete the installation, you go to Upgrade Moodle Database Now. Right, so my block site notification was successfully installed. I can continue now, and I'll be taken a dashboard and nothing has changed here. I want to now look at the settings. So I'm going to go to the settings file and run PHP. This line here says that if this file tries to run outside of the Moodle environment, it just simply won't run. And if this file has a site config, if it's set up, then it should do the following things. So after it's set up, we can run these commands. Now, the first thing is we're going to create a new settings page and that settings page will be this. Let me show it to you. So I'm going to go to site administration and it'll be, yeah. So don't worry how I got there. This page here, which I accessed through the site administration menu, that page is what we're going to create now. So in your settings.php file, you can say if this plugin has been installed, has site config, create a new admin setting page, give it a name, and of course it'll be for this block that we created. That's the block we're creating the setting page for. Get the string. Now here's that get string that accesses the language file. So it's going to get the admin page heading key, which is admin page heading there, and it's going to use that string. So it will output that. Then we're going to add a heading, which will be the general heading. If we want to see whether the plugin is enabled, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a setting to the configuration. The config will be for block side notification and the key will be enabled. Then we're going to do a um, config text. So that's a checkbox. We're going to add just a label that you can type something into. 
And we're going to save that in the config table as notification message. Now, you'll see how this all comes together now. I'm creating an array with key value and giving it a default setting. So these are bootstrap classes and I will use them when I create an alert on the front end. So I'm setting up my array colors array, giving it a default value. Then I'm creating a select box using the built-in Moodle method for admin settings to config select. Again, we're going to save it against this block. We're going to give it notification alert color. These are just the sentences that are displayed uh, with that select block. Going to give it the, the initial value, the default value, and then give it the array that will give us the options. Now this little bit here is important. This adds these settings, this admin settings page. It adds this to the admin tree in the messaging block. So have a look here. In the messaging block, I now have site notifications. So all, everything that I'm setting up here will be added as a page in the messaging block. And one of those two is the actual sentence that you can see there. That text there, that comes from one of those two. I'm not sure which one. So now the, the very fact that I have this in my plugin means that it is available in Moodle. If you add this and you don't see it, increment the version or just make sure that you've got the settings correct. So when I now go to site notification settings, this is exactly what I'm seeing. A notification block enabled or not. There we go. It's that one enabled. So it's a checkbox. Then we have the text for the message and a select box where you select the colors. There we go. Checkbox, input box, and some messages. So uh, I put some messages in here earlier and I can enable that block and select a color. When I save that, I want to show you the DB now. So here I have my database and I'm looking at the config underscore plugins table. And right at the end, this is an inverted view. And there we go. There's block site notification. We have the version number that's coming in from your version.php file. And then we have these three keys that you set up in your uh, settings file. So it's the uh, enabled notification message and notification alert color. So let's have a look at that. Those three there. So I've already set the message, I've set the color, and I've enabled it by checking the box. Now, if I go to my dashboard and I customize the page, I add a block, you should see the block that you create in this list. Doesn't matter what name you give it, it'll be there, or it should be there. And there it is. That's my block coming in right there. So I'm going to just put it to the top. Stop customizing the page. Now I want that to disappear again. So let's open another tab. And in this one, I'm going to go to site notification settings. I'm going to say, don't show the notification block. Save that. So the Moodle DB updates, just let's just refresh. So the one becomes a zero. And in my interface, when I go to that page now, the notification is gone. So let's have a look at the code quickly for that. So right over here in my main block PHP file where we got from the Moodle docs, the get content method, that public method, there was the, this content output. Now, all I did was to say, right, if my plugin has a config file, 
then use this global method get config that accesses the database you give it the key which is this here these th oh, sorry that's the plugin identifier so you get the plugin identifier and then the key so enabled which will return zero in this case in other words this statement will be false so it has site config but that is zero so this will fail so it will bypass this if and it'll set the content to null which will hide the block if i enable it it'll actually get the message from the db using get config for the block it also get the color and then i can set my alert and i can display the message so that is a setup that allows me to have an admin setting for a block and in that admin setting i can put in a string i can set a drop down value save that to the database and actually see that on my front end in a block so this is a warning message let's just save that sorry i need to enable that as well so all through my site where i've now added the block when this, the pages load, you will actually see the message that you pop up.